Good morning, everybody. How are we today? Welcome to Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board, and I am broadcasting live via Facebook and a couple of other platforms as well. If you are joining me live this morning, you are very, very welcome indeed. If you're watching on Catch Up, you might be watching via my YouTube channel, or you might be watching over on the website www.learningtopaint.co.uk. No matter how you are accessing this video thank you very much for taking the time and trouble to tune in it's lovely to have you here one of the things that I do like to do in these broadcasts is to give people a little bit of a shout out so whilst we're waiting for everybody to make the coffee and gather let's say hello to everyone shall we uh, who have we got in the room this morning good morning Martina always an award for the first comment of the day you win again. You're very good at it, Martina. Uh, who else have we got? Heather, Jan, good morning. Joy, oh, we are scattered all over the place this morning. Sue, good morning from Scotland. Oh, how lovely to have you here. Thank you very much for joining me. Anne, Maureen, Mum, Liz, good morning. Uh, Patricia, what's Patricia saying? Nice to be here doing nothing for a change. Oh, good, you're very welcome. I hope you've got a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or something to keep you company while we uh, start a new project this morning. Thea, good morning. Pam, Rosie, who uh, I'm not even going to start pronouncing French in my very bad Dorset accent. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, Jane on the Isle of Man says it's very wet. Send some of the rain south, Jane. The garden needs it. Rubina, good morning. Karen, Caroline, Christine, Karen, oh, all the Ks. Uh, <laughs> uh, Michelle, good morning from Eastbourne. Leslie and uh, Catherine as well. Good morning to each and every one of you. Oh, Carol's there as well. Popped up. If I miss uh, you commenting live, I do apologise. Talk to each other. Don't worry about talking to me. Talk to each other. See how you all are. Make sure that you're all okay. That's all that matters to me. Now, what are we getting up to uh, this morning? It is August. Uh, if, just in case you're watching this back. Uh, it is the 2nd of August today. Now, August is my favourite month for all sorts of reasons, but it is my favourite month. And it also heralds the start of a new set of inspiration for my All Aboard Artists group. Who are the All Aboard Artists? I'm sure some of you know, but uh, humour me anyway. Uh, the All Aboard Artists is uh, my online art group. And it really is. I know it says there it's a fantastic creative community, uh, but it really is a fantastic creative community. That's not me hyping it up. That is, it's just full of awesome people. And there are various levels of membership. Now, I know that there are some All Aboarders in the room this morning. So if you are an All Aboard artist, uh, do uh, make a comment and uh, give an honest review of what the All Aboard Artists is like. I think it's very welcoming. Um, you've got various levels of subscription there. There are six membership levels, so it can suit your budget and it can suit your uh, time constraints as well. We're all very busy people, aren't we? Now, if you would like to read more about the All Aboard Artists, let me show you where it is you need to go. So you need to go over to that website, www.learningtopaint.co.uk, and you need to find the learning part of the menu. Your screen might look slightly different to this. There you go, you can see the All Aboard artists there. And uh, if you pop over to that web page, it tells you lots more about the All Aboard artists. There's various messages from me there that you can read. All the different things about the levels of membership. And you can go and you can click on each one of these colours. Funnily enough, they're named after paint colours. So let's just choose Cobalt Violet. It's funny how I gravitate towards that, isn't it? Um, and you can learn more about uh, what you can expect as a member. But the most important thing to know is that there are uh, there's a different uh, bit of inspiration uh, every month. So each month we choose a different topic. Uh, and this month, this month, uh, we have chosen South Africa as our point of inspiration. And there's all sorts of things going on in the All Aboard Artists. So uh, uh, this week, uh, there will be a demonstration on how to do animal texture. Uh, I know that uh, one level of membership has got the challenge of including animal silhouettes in their paintings. We have a pre-recorded tutorial that is a desert landscape. That was a real tricky one for me. I have to say, lots of lovely loose skies and then the tiniest detail on the tree. I know some of the All Aboarders are going to love that. And uh, what else have we got? Oh, rhinoceros. 
I've never painted a rhinoceros before. I'm very excited about doing that. And uh, that tutorial is live. You can meet up no matter where you are in the world and you can follow along with me you can chat to various people we have meetups we have our own private facebook group and i know that there are some all aboarders uh, in the room now what are the all aboarders uh, saying uh now barbara has uh, li uh, left a very lovely review she's put the all aboard artist is very supportive helps focus my mind and make me do art otherwise i always seem to find other things i have to do you and me both barbara absolutely you and me both um, so if you are interested in the All Aboard Artists, pop over there. But what we are doing today is we're taking that bit of inspiration in South Africa. And I thought I would include it in Technique Tuesdays. Well, it helps me uh, with uh, some of the tuition and things that, that I have to do to kind of get me focused. Like Barbara said, get me focused. Otherwise, I'll be dribbling on about all sorts of things. Now, what is it that we are going to be tackling as part of Technique Tuesday for the next few weeks? We are going to be doing this. Now, when I posted this on social media yesterday, lots of you seemed to know about it. And I'd never come across this bird until I found this photograph on Unsplash. This is a lilac-breasted roller. And to be honest, when I first saw this bird, I genuinely thought it was made up genuinely thought someone had coloured it in. Isn't it fantastic? Just so beautiful. And I thought, uh, from a person that absolutely loves colour, what's not to like about that? The other thing that made me chuckle about it ever so slightly was it is all the colours from the levels of membership from the All Aboard artists as well. So, so perhaps it can be our spirit bird <laughs> as a bit of a mascot. So this is what we're going to do. And uh, we, we do mixed media. We did the fungi last month, didn't we? We're kind of throwing all sorts of things at it. And it's funny, in my world, um, sometimes the, the same thing comes up again and again and again. Now, last week I did a demonstration for, I led a workshop for the SAA for Rufus Fox, which you can still go and watch on Catch Up if you are a member. And we were using watercolour and we were using a bit of brush out and we were using pastel pencils as well. And this happens to me all the time that I sort of rediscover a new medium and then I go, why don't I do more of this? And then uh, on the back of that, Paint Magazine have asked me to contribute a very, very lengthy article all on pastels, which is what I've been working on uh, over the weekend. So I have my pastel sticks out and I have my pan pastels and uh, got my pastel pencils as well. I really enjoyed working with that. And I know my mum is in uh, the room today as well. And uh, she's a stellar pastel painter and uh, used to use pastels all the time. She's very kindly gifted me her pastel sets now because you probably know that uh, she's quite the seamstress as well. So I sort of uh, feel like I'm following in her footsteps a little bit too. Too, and I've really enjoyed it. So I thought, I tell you what, we're not really doing pastels as part of uh, the All Aboard Artists this month, so let's include it for Technique Tuesday. Now, shall we get started on the project? Good morning. All those people who've just popped up and said good morning, good morning. I apologise if I have missed you. Who have I missed? Uh, I've, I've got to go back and say hello. I hate missing people out. Um, you all take the time and trouble to tune in. I want to uh, virtually wave. Sue, uh, uh, <laughs> Janice is saying, morning, made it for once, up early to put the rubbish out. Chores have to be done, don't they? Um, uh, Sandy is here. Anita's in the room. Good morning. Had very great pleasure of working with Anita last week. Uh, I think Anita and I could conquer the world with art materials and a bit of social media if we had the chance. Uh, Val, good morning. Alice, uh, who else we got? Sheena, Ali D. Um, who else we got? Alice, uh, D, good morning. It's like we've just been talking, isn't it? And uh, now Martina is asking a question. Just before I carry on, if you cannot if you cannot attend live meetups in the All Aboard Artists, is there a catch up facility? So there, Martina, there's various levels, so you don't necessarily have to catch up. So one of the levels of membership is a pre-recorded tutorial from start to finish, and you can watch it any time of the day or night, and you have access to it for a whole month, plus all of the archive footage of those uh, challenges that have gone on before. So have a read. And if you've got any questions, then do email me. If there's never an obligation. You're very, very welcome to email me to ask a question. So that's ali at ali at learningtopaint.co.uk. Uh, so lots of uh, things for you to take part in. But like I said, pastels this month. So let's take you to uh, the overhead camera and let's introduce you uh, to some of the materials that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be very 
very uh, basic this week and then we'll kind of ramp it up. Now, here's uh, my black and white copy. I am going to take the shortcut and I am going to uh, do a transfer, but we'll talk more about that in a second. But the first thing I wanted to do is to introduce you to the surface that I'm going to be using for this demonstration because you might not have come across it before. Now, this is pastel mat. Uh, this is really useful uh, paper for pastels because it is a cork surface and what that means is that although it feels very smooth unlike a lot of textured pastel surfaces it doesn't feel rough under your finger actually feels dead flat smooth but it's not it's got a really textured surface it's just very very fine and what that means is that it holds onto the pastel it creates a lot less dust you can for those colored pencil artists out there that will know about layering you can use colored pencil on it too and you can layer and layer and layer on this and it completely holds up to it um, I love it for pastels. I think it is the absolute uh, definitive surface. Comes in a variety of colours as well. This is uh, the light green um, that I really love. I just think it's an awesome surface. And if you want to know where to purchase it, I get my pastel mat from the SAA. And if you go over to the Technique Tuesday blog on the Learning to Paint website, you will find a link as where you can buy that. Um, it's just incredible. If you like coloured pencil, oil pastel, chalk pastel, uh, graphite pencil, if you like to mix up your media, do a little bit of painting first and then put pastel over top, this is absolutely the definitive surface. Now I've gone for the light green, um, A, because uh, Anita, who is in the room at the moment, very kindly uh, fashioned me with some, but also because I quite liked the idea of getting those colours to pop. I know that the colour is very similar to the head of the bird, but I'm hoping that I can get those uh, highlights to really show out and the darks too. Um, there'll probably be things that I do to the background before I start the bird, but... It's a good place. It's a good place to start. I mean, the colour that you choose for your uh, background uh, is so um, what's the word uh, objective really, because I could have gone for this. I could have gone for a dark blue. I could have gone for white and, and used all the colours. I just had this and uh, I thought it kind of fitted quite well. Now this is my sample piece. This is the thing that I will be using to demonstrate any techniques on it before I go over to my large piece. This is a system that I quite like to use because you can test things out, test marks out, test colours out on the actual surface before you go to your kind of your posh bit, as it were. So uh, I'm going to keep that together with my picture as I'm working on it. And we are going to do a transfer method. So to do that, I'm going to slightly change what we do. Now, most of you will know if I'm doing a transfer method, I like to use a product called Trace Down, and I slip a sheet of Trace Down underneath here and uh, do my transfer, and, and jobs are good and really. But Pastel doesn't like Trace Down an awful lot. You can use it, it's perfectly okay to use it. Don't uh, email me and say, but you can use Trace Down with, with Pastel. Yes, of course you can use Trace Down with Pastel. It's just not my preferred method of doing it. Um, I could use the graphite trace down, I could use the white trace down, but I find myself, this is just my opinion, I find them very difficult to erase on pastel matte paper. So that means I've either got to get it astonishingly correct first time, or I'm going to have to do an awful lot of work to alter anything that I don't like. So I use a slightly different method. Bear with me for this. I'm going to pop my sheet of pastel mat to one side. I'm going to flip my uh, bird black and white over. And I'm going to use this stuff uh, for doing my trace down. Now, I'm very fortunate that I have a good collection of these. These are called pan pastels. This has got a little lid on it. This, I was trying to remember the colour name of this, a thalo green tint. So a very kind of pale, light, turquoise colour. Uh, now, it kind of works uh, for eyeshadow. So if you if you like the kind of <laughs> that sort of technique, uh, these work perfectly. This is called a soft applicator, and that's soft with a double F S O double F T. 
T applicator. It's a bit like a palette knife with a sponge end, and I've got several of these. I really like them for applying it. You could use an eyeshadow applicator. You can equally use your finger if you want to. Um, they are very concentrated. Now, these are not the cheapest things to buy, but I promise you they last an awful long time. I've had mine for a number of years and I've barely dented the surface. Um, who have I missed saying good morning to? Mick, good morning. Hello, lovely. Uh, we've been chatting as well this morning, haven't we? Joe and Urs, good morning to all of you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat the back of my black and white with some of this. So you just rub this onto the surface and you burnish it into the paper like this. Now what would have been more sensible was if I had worked out where my bird actually occurs on this piece of paper. But you know what, we'll just go for it. Now I know it looks like a pale colour in the camera, it is a pale colour, but um, it's going to show up fine. I have tested. I have tested, for once in my life I have actually tested out the theory. I'm pushing quite hard into the surface, I'm picking up uh, as much dust as I can. And I'm pushing quite hard into the surface because I don't want there to be lots of residue when I flip it over onto my piece of pastel mat. So I'm sort of uh, smushing it in to the surface. Very technical term for a Tuesday morning. Well, we are here for Technique Tuesday. See what I did there? So really pushing that in. I don't need a lot of it at all. Now, it's a good idea to keep the lids on these. It's not a fantastic idea to uh, drop these. They do shatter. And I have got two or three that have uh, seen better days because they're in powder form. So I try very hard not to drop them. Pop that to one side. Um, now, what you can do is I, I could blow on this if I wanted to get rid of the dust. May I recommend that you don't do that in an enclosed area, that you do that uh, in somewhere where the dust isn't going to be a problem. Try not to inhale it. It is a pigment after all. Um, the other thing that you can do, which I've got just over to one side, is to take a bit of kitchen roll and to go back over that to make sure that there's no dust residue. You'd be surprised how much of it comes away. So let's lift that up, uh, clean my hands off because they're filthy already, and then let's get that piece of tray, um, piece of trace down, piece of pastel mat into view. Now, obviously, we uh, need to attach this to our surface, and pastel mat does not like masking tape. It doesn't like masking tape. It doesn't like framers tape. Um, it's going to mark whatever you put on it. Oh, good morning, Rachel. Lovely to have you here. Thank you for tuning in. Um, whatever you put on this to stick it down, it is going to mark the pastel mat. But I have discovered that there's one kind of tape which uh, marks a little bit less than maybe some of the others do. And that is washi tape. Now, washi tape I use a lot uh, in uh, journaling and I use it for wrapping my birthday presents and all of those kind of things. Um, if you haven't come across this, this is a, a nasty habit that will get the better of you because look, it's so pretty. It comes in lots of um, kind of styles and patterns and the like, and you can spend rather a lot of money uh, on various types of washi tape. It's just that it is incredibly low tack, hardly any stick to it at all. So I'm going to use that to uh, anchor down my black and white. At the top, two tabs. I think you know the drill by now, but just in case you don't, two tabs. Don't do it with one tab because it will move and it will slip and make sure that it is stuck down. You'll see how that marks in a little bit when I take this away. Now my pastel mat paper, it does tend to uh, curl. So if you wanted to stick it down to your board, what I would recommend you do is double some tape over. You could use um, masking tape for that. Double it over, stick it in the corner, and then it will sit down nice and flat. I'm not going to do that myself because um, you'll see in a minute, I like to turn my sheet around. Uh, now, standard transfer method applies. So I'm using a biro. Um, you're going to need to test the amount of pressure you apply for this uh, because you don't want to carve a hole in your pastel mat. So you've got to make enough pressure, but not too much. Uh, and the only way to test that is to get cracking with it and to see how far you get. So let's get the top of the beacon and then let's lift up the corner 
to see if that's coming through. Now it is very faint. It is there, I promise you it's there, but uh, what you um, will be doing, it, well, what you will be doing, what I will be doing in a minute, is uh, going back over that. Now, Christine, I got uh, slightly sidetracked there because Christine looks like she's come up with a good idea. If you put a magnetic sheet under the pastel mat and then hold your image down with magnets, it will hold. Christine, have I ever told you how much I love you? That's a genius idea. And I will be off after this broadcast uh, to see how I can make that happen. I did wonder how the pastel, uh, how the pencil artist did it. Um, I will be doing that. Uh, thank you very much for that. And as Ali D says, yes, you are full of genius ideas. I'm going to be stealing that. Don't worry, I will credit you with it, I promise. So let's just make sure that I've still got my pressure okay. Yes, I have. Can you just see that there? Little beak, little beak going on. Uh, let's get the eye in. I'm trying not to get my head in short as well. Gary would be proud of me, wouldn't he? So uh, let's get that head in. <clears throat> I do have some weights, you see. I'm, I'm going to get in shot now. See, I have some weights here. These are actually uh, sewing weights, uh, which I do use, uh, particularly when I'm out on location, to stop things uh, flying away. As you will see, they do have a bit of a theme. Um, and uh, But they still don't quite work. So a magnetic sheet and magnets... Christine, by the time you come back next week, I'll probably be demonstrating that. If you have any recommendations for, let's just use Christine, shall we, while she's in the room, for the uh, type of magnetic sheet or any of those kind of things, uh, then do let me know. And I will be sure to pass that recommendation on. You know us over here at Technique Tuesday. That's why this is such a fantastic community, because we share our ideas uh, Heather is saying crafters use that method for rubber stamping so if the design needs re-inking it stays in place. Ah, you see it's all coming out now. Now uh, both uh, Christine and um, Heather have been uh, all aboard artist members in the past um, or currently. So that's the kind of fantastic sharing that you get. Uh, as being a member all of these marvelous ideas and we all keep learning don't we there's never a time in painting when we stop learning so let's just double check that I am pressing enough let's lift that up yes we've got a bird there so can you see you've got a nice soft line rather than it being kind of too in your face and hard to edit uh, now the one thing I do need to look at I'll do that in a minute is I'm looking to see where the colours transition between one and the other. And uh, I'm going to need to know that, aren't I? But maybe I don't need to know that for the transfer. Maybe I just need to know that in terms of uh, when I do the drawing in, in a little bit. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Mick is, uh, is writing a poem as we speak. Our resident poet, the lovely Mick, is uh, back in the room and writing a poet. Rosemary is saying this is my favourite bird. I'm just, I can't get over the fact that I'd never heard of it until um, I saw a couple of photos of it. And I know that some of you have said, oh yes, I've got photos of this. I have clearly missed out. Now Sue, uh, who is a coloured pencil artist uh, and a very good one to boot, is saying, I have a magnetic drawing board, which is great for this too. I'll find the link in case anyone is interested. Ah, uh, Sue, you're a genius. Thank you very much. Um, brilliant. I love it when we share. What's not to like about that? Art should be about sharing, shouldn't it? I know it's my job and, uh, and I sort of get paid uh, to share. But it's all about the artistic community, isn't it? Uh, Rosie's come up with a few links. So if you are watching this back on Catch Up, what I will try to do in subsequent weeks is you won't be able to see these uh, comments uh, coming in on your device necessarily. So what I will do is I will make an effort in next week's broadcast uh, to share some of those links on the blog with you. I'll go and do a little bit of research myself. And we'll come back uh, with some new zingy equipment next week, shall we? So while I was chatting about that, I was getting uh, various elements of this feather in. I was getting that shadow in there. I've got my reference photograph. Uh, you can't see it. It's just kind of uh, on my screen and just slightly out of shot. 
One of the things I have noticed, I know that people say that sometimes devices are the scourge of the earth and they don't want to get involved with devices. But you know what? Sometimes they are brilliant for being able to zoom in and zoom out on an element if you're not quite sure how it's constructed. Uh, Jean is in the room. Good morning, lovely. Uh, please don't ever apologise for being late. And of course, you can always watch this on catch up. If you get distracted by the cat or the postman or your cup of coffee or whatever it is, you can always watch this back again. Um, we've got a wealth of uh, Technique Tuesdays over on the website now for you to enjoy. And that's what they're there for, for you to go and have a look and a search. Possibly a bit of inspiration, possibly uh, to understand your materials a little bit more. However, it works for you. So we're getting, I'm going to call it a talon. <laughs> I don't think it's really a talon. I've been uh, painting an eagle recently. Uh, those really are talons. I'm not so sure on uh, this little creature that it is. Uh, let's have a double check. Um, so Christine is saying, Hobbycraft, Create and Craft, Crafters, Companion and Amazon all sell magnetic sheets. Lovely. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, I'm going to go and have a look and see what I can find out for us all. Uh, let's go at uh, what we do now bit of tail going in a uh, bit of the end of tail I've chosen a piece of pastel mat far bigger than actually my subject so we've got a bit of room to put things in you will see next week why that is very very important now we've only got just uh, whilst I'm finishing off and getting this branch in we've only got three weeks on this project there's a technique Tuesday next week on the 9th and there's one on the 16th, um, but then I uh, take a, a couple of weeks off because I've got my summer school in, which I know some of you are coming to, and uh, I'm disappearing on a little mini break as well at the end of the month. So I've only got three weeks on this, which means I've got to crack on with it so that you can get to see the majority of it. Uh, how are we doing? Yeah, we've got a bird, it's on a twig, it's all good. So when you are happy, uh, that you've got everything in and done then you just need to very carefully peel this away don't peel it away quickly because you don't want to disturb the surface and you will see I'm hoping the camera can pick that up yes it can can you see how the washi tape has ever so slightly marked the surface it hasn't removed anything I promise you it hasn't removed anything and equally it hasn't deposited anything either all it's done is ever so slightly change the nap of the cork and there's a really easy way if you use washi tape there's a really easy way to get that back and that is to take your finger and to go back over those marks and to just rough up the nap of the surface again look at that all gone all gone and uh, back to normal and then we can concentrate on our roller bird now I've got two pastel pencils here I've also got a little bamboo uh, dish because eventually I will be depositing all the pastels that I use in there and it's much easier to keep it in there than to try to have them on your work surface and make it dirty all of those kind of things but I've got a couple of pastel pencils here because I'm now going to draw back into my roller and I've got two brands here um, there are lots of brands of pastel pencil on the market. There really are. And I know that it's very overwhelming um, in terms of which ones do I buy? What do I do? How do I use them? All of those kind of things. What I would suggest you do is watch lots of different pastel pencil artists. There are loads of them on YouTube. There's loads of them on the SAA. There's some really good ones on social media. And... Um, you can see what they recommend. Now I use, uh, oh, I was gonna count them, but I can't count them. Um, I use uh, Derwent, I use Faber-Castell, I use Caran d'Ache, I use Stabilo, and I use Conte. So that's five different ones. Now, that's not me showing off. What I'm suggesting is that there are different pastel pencils for different subject matter. I've got a huge wealth of them that I've collected over the years. Uh, I know that some of you are going to say, huh, well, how am I supposed to know which ones to buy? Um, all I can tell you is uh, my two favourites are this one, which is the Stabilo, the, what's called the Carbothello pencil, and the Caran d'Ache, but... 
big, 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 big butt coming. Those are both very soft, particularly the Caran d'Ache. So I substitute, I substitute, that's not the right word. Um, I also use uh, the Faber-Castell Pit because they're a little bit harder and the Derwent, which are harder still because you don't always want them to be soft. Sometimes you want them for detail. So for fine detail, I wouldn't necessarily use my Carbothello pencil. I would use my Pit one. So effectively, what I'm saying is, uh, and this, I'm just going to show you this. I'm going to gather up the tools that I've got. I'm working on a different pastel project at the moment, which you will see later in the year. Here is my little fistful of pastel pencils that I've been using for that project. Now, the black, I needed to be sharp and stay to a point. Um, so I've been using my uh, pit one for that. Um, I needed one of my whites to be super white, so I've been using the Derwent for that. I needed one of my colours to be a very soft yellow, which is quite difficult to find, and so I've been using the Pit one for that. So this is what I'm saying. Pick a project, pick the pencils and the colours to suit that project, and, and go from there. Or if you've got a birthday, or Christmas, or some sort of celebration coming up, and your relatives want to know what to get you, then say some pastel pencils and send them a link and point them in the right direction. Now, Rachel's making me laugh because she's put, uh, she's uh, referencing my mini break, um, possibly musically themed. Uh, there's a there's a small chance. There might even be two of them, Rach. Uh, and I, I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm gonna see you on both of them as well. Uh, Rightio. <laughs> so uh, back to the drawing. I've got my nice little uh, pale outline here. What I'm going to do now is to work back into it. Why have I got two? colors i've got two colors because i don't like uh working back into a drawing with just one color so for example if i want to go and put the shadows in there's not a lot of point me using a very pale colored pencil because it's going to show up too much so i'm going to use my gray for those marks where i want there potentially to be a dark then I can go in. Where I want there to be detail, of course, I'm going to use my pit pencil. Um, this is a dark green. I could have used a, a brown or a black or something similar. Um, and I know that there are going to be questions out there about sharpening pastel pencils, uh, but we will get to that in due course. That is a very contentious issue pastel pencils, what's the best pencil sharpener, all of those kind of things. You're all going to have an idea about how you see that. I'm still doing a bit of research into that and I have to say not got to the end of it. Now Joy is making a very good point. I know that I was saying that uh, if you've got a birthday or Christmas or something coming up and you want to uh, get yourself some pastel pencils, she has made the very astute point that maybe you just want to treat yourself. And you never need an excuse to do that, do you? Go and uh, go and treat yourself. I think that's an excellent idea, Joy. So I've got my green and my grey. Uh, I'm now going to reach over to my pit white to be able to draw that back in. I'm looking at my reference material all the time, uh, looking at where the kind of the highlights are going to be on my bird. And as per usual, you've been here before, many of you have been here before, you know the drill. The dot dash method, Morse code, allowing yourself the opportunity to change your mind about where your marks are going, how you might fill it in. And I have to say, even the pan pastel is proving to be a little bit tricky to go back over. So you can probably see now why I recommend that technique rather than the trace down. Good morning, Thyra. So we will get uh, some of those feathers in. They are fluffy little suckers, aren't they? Just beautiful. Look at those transitions. I'm going to show you the reference material again so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, where, for example, uh, along that cheek where the orange goes into that lovely kind of pink colour, you've got those feathers coming down underneath the beak. Uh, where you've got very, very soft, very, very soft transitions of colour. So all of those things I need to consider. Where's me white? Um, I need uh, some highlights in here. 
and I think my mark making is really going to be tested on this bird to make sure that I get fluffiness but it's got to look like feather and not fur but all of these things are whoops are ahead of us aren't they so we will tackle them as we get to them we won't worry about them now no point worrying about them now uh, let's get these final few marks in before we part company if you have any questions don't forget stick them into the live Facebook chat or don't forget over on the blog there is the opportunity to uh, put a comment in and I always love to see your comments coming in so if you have any questions uh, do pop them in there also because it's not just me that has to answer them if you see a comment come up on the blog and you're thinking oh do you know what I, I really know the answer to that and I think I've got some interesting information to share then you are very welcome to comment over there too you don't have to stop commenting just because uh, it's not the live broadcast I always like to see what people have to say about stuff now let's get those last few claws in uh, so uh, there's a few links going on in terms of the metallic board <laughs> sorry just laughing at my own name there you think I'd have got over it by now uh, and uh, I will go and I will investigate all of those and see which I think is going to work for me because let's face it that's all that matters what works for me isn't necessarily going to be the thing that works for you as well I will go and have a look and next week I will come back with a bit more information and uh, hopefully you can see what I've decided on and also hopefully it's quite useful that I can uh, do a little bit of research on your behalf and then you can see whether it works for you and you don't have to spend the money. Uh, let's get those last little bits in. So I'm kind of addressing that uh, twig branch or whatever it is that this bird is sitting on. Now one thing I'm going to do just before we part company today, uh, I know this sounds a bit daft, but I'm actually going to uh, get hold of my... Do I want black? No, I don't think I do want black. I think I want dark brown. Um, I'm going to get hold of my uh, dark brown pencil, which isn't quite sharp enough, but it'll be all right for today. And I'm going to block in the eye. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because uh, the eyes are kind of... Um, they're not just the most important part of it, because let's face it, on this bird... You've got those colour transitions to consider as well. But getting that eye in means that at least my bird has some life to it. Uh, so it will kind of stare at me beady eyed, literally. Uh, now I'm going to do a close up shot for you so that you can see those marks that I have made. Uh, Christine saying, oh dear Ali, I'm making you spend money. Uh, Christine, I never need encouragement. I never need encouragement. Very, very happy to do that all of my own accord. So can you see uh, in the close-up camera where I've made those little dots and those dashes? Janice is saying, I love the photo of this bird. It looks like it fell into a box of pastels. <laughs> That's genius. We've got those dots, those dashes, those marks trying to create that feather uh, texture. All of those kind of things coming down to the twig that uh, the bird is sitting on, looking kind of round and fluffy. And that is going to be all ready and prepared for the next phase next week. Now, what is it that we're going to be covering next week? I, I always forget to tell you what it is that we're going to be covering in subsequent weeks. And so you don't necessarily know whether you want to tune in or not. Now, next week, we're going to be doing blocking in. And for that, I'm going to be using uh, pan pastels in the background. I'm going to be doing a vignette background, even though it's with a dry media and not with a wet media. I'm going to be creating a sort of lovely misty effect with the pan pastels. And I'm going to be using uh, probably pan pastels and stick pastels to block in our bird to get those transitions. So if you're interested in pastel painting or you've got a set of pastels and you didn't know what to do with them, then hopefully next week will be useful to you. Don't forget, if you are considering uh, joining the All Aboard Artists, this is a perfect time of the month to do it because you've got the whole month ahead of you in terms of membership and you can halt your subscription whenever you like. You can just join us for a month if you want to. If you think, oh, do you know what? This subject matter really interests me. Then you can pop over. You don't need to sign up for a, a long time and it's everything from £5 a month up to £40 a month. You uh, choose the level of a subscription to suit your budget 
budget and your time as well because sometimes August is a busy time for people. I hope you're excited about this project. I really am. I'm loving uh, drawing the birds at the moment. Uh, you know I like a bird anyway. I'm obviously very fond of a chicken now and then, but I do have a bit of, I feel like I have a bit of an affinity with birds and I think pastels are going to be the perfect medium for it. If you have any questions in the meantime, pop over to the blog, uh, pop your questions on there. Don't forget to check out the blog to answer things for people as well. I'm going to go immediately and uh, go and research uh, magnetic sheets. And I think today that uh, my sign off is going to be uh, quoting our lovely resident poet Mick, uh, because I think he has summed up today absolutely beautifully. He has said, round trees do nice pastels, very fruity. <laughs> Mick, you do make me chuckle. Now you, all of you take care of each other, won't you? But mostly take care of yourselves. I'm off now to finish my other project and to do some other things uh, ready for a very creative week ahead. I hope you have one too. Take care. I will catch up with you very soon. Bye, lovely people. Bye.